Back in February, uh, Prime Minister Antonio Costa announced his intention to abolish the country's famous residential golden visa. After extensive political back and forth, a bill to that effect has finally been approved and the residential option is officially over. These changes come in response to widespread unhappiness amongst native Portuguese at the state of the domestic housing market. Hello, it's Ted Bauman here, uh, Chief of Global Diversification here at International Living and the publisher and author of the Global Citizen Service, something I have just launched. Now, uh, expat favorite country Portugal has been busy on the legislative front in 2023. Back in February, uh, Prime Minister Antonio Costa announced his intention to abolish the country's famous residential golden visa. This gave foreigners long-term residency in exchange for a residential property investment of at least 250,000 euros. Now, after extensive political back and forth, a bill to that effect has finally been approved and the residential option is officially over. Now, it's still possible to get a Portuguese golden visa, but it will cost you more. One way is to donate 250,000 euros to artistic or cultural institutions. But of course, unlike the residential property option, you don't get a property in exchange for that. You don't get any rents, you don't get any yields along with that visa. The other options all involve a minimum of 500,000 euros, either donated for scientific research or invested in some sort of business activity. Now, these changes come in response to widespread unhappiness amongst native Portuguese at the state of the domestic housing market. And indeed, they do have something to complain about. From 2015 to 2021, average rents rose by 112%. Over the same period, house prices shot up by nearly 160%. And in the capital of Lisbon, things were even worse. Housing costs increased by over 300%. Now, the residential golden visa was designed to rescue the Portuguese housing market in the aftermath of the global financial crisis of 2008. And although some people deny the connection, locals say the strategy succeeded too well. And that's why housing prices are getting out of hand. Now, Portugal still needs foreign money, which is why the country is encouraging potential migrants to take advantage of its digital nomad and independent means visas, which also give long-term residency rights. Instead of capital investments in property or business, these visas require the holder to bring in active or passive income from abroad. Employment inside Portugal is forbidden on these visas. Now, part of the attraction of these income-based visas is Portugal's non-habitual resident or NHR tax regime. This exempts foreign income from Portuguese tax for 10 years. Passive income, like pension, is taxed at a concessionary rate of 10%. And if you do have any Portuguese source income, like, for example, investments, it's taxed at a flat rate of 20%. By comparison, Portuguese citizens are taxed at rates of up to 48%. Now it looks as if the NHR is also under the chopping block. Costa announced on Thursday that the government will end the NHR regime for new residents in 2024, but it will remain in place for those who've already qualified. He told CNN Portugal that to maintain this measure for the future is to prolong fiscal injustice, in addition to being a biased way of continuing to inflate the housing market, which I think is an important consideration. Now, Portuguese real estate interests have long protested that the residential golden visa is not to blame for housing costs going up, and the evidence suggests they may be right. For example, since 2012, only 12,500 plus applicants got property-based golden visas, but over the same period, more than 500,000 foreigners moved to Portugal. Most of those people came from elsewhere in the European Union. The government clearly believes this influx of Europeans looking to take advantage of the NHR is what's behind the housing affordability crisis, simply because these people need a place to live. And with all these people coming in, deep pockets, not paying much tax, they're able to buy housing and rent housing out from under uh, Portuguese residents. Indeed, one of Portugal's biggest property developers says that 65% of their clients are foreign residents looking to take advantage of the NHR. 
The big question, of course, is what will replace the NHR. If the experience of the residential golden visa is any guide, it's likely that the government will replace it with another concessionary program, albeit probably not as attractive. Now, none of this means that a U.S. taxpayer who takes advantage of the remaining Portuguese visa categories will end up paying more tax than under the NHR. That's because Portugal and the U.S. have a tax treaty that prevents double taxation and gives a U.S. income tax credit for any Portuguese taxes paid. Now, I'll be monitoring this situation carefully in my new Global Citizen Service, where I will be posting regular updates. This is Ted Bauman signing off. Take care.